Welcome to the A Minute to Midnight show, folks. This is Tony coming to you from New Zealand. On with me today, I have for, I think, the second time we've had you on now, Mark Sutherland, who is in London. So it's great to be talking to you again, Mark, and to have the perspective of someone in Britain. It's an absolute delight to join you again, uh, Tony. Thank you very much indeed. There's so many things that we can cover, um, obviously, in this show. I guess the big thing that's taking over all news at the moment seems to be the coronavirus. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, well, that's kind of hard to know exactly where that's going to go, how big it's going to get or whether it's going to fizzle out or, um, you know, or or become a real global problem. I do notice that... um, the numbers in China have jumped big time uh, in the last 24 hours, partly or largely because of the way that they are reporting the the numbers. Mm. But, you mm. know, I, I, I look and I, I just, and some people are not going to like this, but I see uh, Reuters reports that Donald Trump has praised China over its handling of the outbreak, adding that the United States was working closely with Beijing. I think they've handled it professionally, and I think they're extremely capable, Trump said. Um, I do have a bit of a problem with that, (laughs) quite frankly. Yes. Yes. Um, Well, let's go straight to it then, Tony, because the Epoch Times, which is excellent, the Epoch Times, um, Larry Elder, the wonderful Larry Elder over there in California and America, just did an interview with uh, with a guy, um, I just can't think of his name, Philip someone, Philip Joshe, I think, who is their investigative journalist over there. And he, you, we can find it online. And he was saying some excellent, excellent stuff because um, I'm afraid, you know, having to disagree with the president on this thing, the fact that the Chinese suppress this for seven weeks for a start tony as you are fully aware that the dr lee who sadly died who was the eye the eye doctor who was warning the local chinese authorities about what was going on was then ignored and then other whistleblowers were ignored and then these whistleblowers had to apologize and say that they were coming out with anti anti sort of communist uh, behavior and all this kind of thing then according to this reporter from the epoch times and he was he uh, made a very big thing very calmly what wonderful way that he was answering the questions he made a big thing about the fact that we are talking to people in uh, wahoon talking to various people on the ground um the fact that uh, all this whole thing about starting in a in a poultry market you know and people there they are eating bats and all this kind of thing he said no um it has not come from that market the fact that as we are fully aware the the comments and this is why when you and i exchanged an email about it in regard to the information it's so hard to go get through some of the information because the chinese government have been in such control so the fact that now he talked about the fact that the mortuaries are working 24 7 and that there were something like 24,000 plus deaths you know whether this was a day ago they were talking about the fact that they are going around arresting taking people off the streets that they think are showing the symptoms to this these are on twitter there's filming of this um one particular um very brave individual who's been filming some of this i think is no longer with us sadly um the chinese ambassador to america was on uh, face the nation people can look that up he looked very very uncomfortable when you study his body language when he was asked about dr lee asked about this other individual as a citizen journalist has been going around trying to um release all this because if there's 400 million people in lockdown it means that the chinese communist party um their leader you know virtually thinking him behaving as if he's a god um and trying to forget chairman mao and move into this as they are into this capitalist system their growth their growth uh, has been registered as the slowest economic growth at 6.1 percent since 1990 and all this in other words what i'm saying is is that the chinese the communist government would it would not be um without 
without sort of discussion to see the fact that they could sacrifice 15 percent of their population, be prepared to do something like that um, to get all the factories open again and to get all the economy going. So we have all of this kind of thing. It, it is, you know, the way that there is this disdain for the Chinese people and the way that they want to actually treat their populace because they are concerned, I think, about a revolution. You you have touched on this briefly when before we went live. You said about Hong Kong, there's all the protests of Hong Kong and then suddenly all of that is shut down. And the Epoch Times journalist says, of course, there's speculation. Is this a bioweapon? Of course, the Wahoon Laboratory um, is there. And he also he also said in an interview that it has links with the people's uh, it has with links with the Chinese army and all this. Is this a bioweapon that's gone wrong? And also the virus is a generic name because it's flu, flu like. He said that um, the symptoms are like are worse than SARS. Um, the figures, of course, in regard to SARS, when that affected China, they they suppressed all that. It's all this thing about the control of information, which has huge ramifications for us in the West. And also the dis and we may go on to discuss this, the discussions of what is going on in other countries in the West, how they want to suppress, control the Internet, etc. You know, the discussions in Canada, the potential discussions now in the UK and with one or two Democratic people in America, like Elizabeth Warren, who have been pushing that whole narrative. So you're right. The virus has kicked off Brexit off the table. It's kicked off the Hong Kong off the table. But when we are seeing tweets of vans where bodies seem bodies in body bags are, are piled into vans, when we are seeing people pulled out of their homes, when we've reached a point, as this journalist said for the Epoch Times, or credit to him, turning around and saying that people are wary about going into hospital because they don't think they're going to come out, their secure quarantine situation, um, the fact that there was one tweet I saw where you saw it looks like either the police or the Chinese military in in uh, hashmat outfits and then they're drawing guns and then off screen you can hear the uh, bullets going off in the back. You can hear the sounds of the gunfire and then you see people uh, mourning the fact that certain people have been shot on the street, etc. Um, we really are trying to piece a difficult picture on the one hand together but we know that something's gone on, gone on, and we also know that is that the Chinese government had seven weeks. They held on to this for seven weeks before Christmas, and they did not do anything about it. And now that has spread. And of course, with the new year, of course, people would have left Wahoon to go back to wherever their you know, families were living in other parts of China. So if they had the disease then, then they would have taken that. And of course, with international flight now, that's been spreading around around the world. And China, the Chinese authority, um, we have to look at look at the economic indicator in regard to how many goods are taken on ships and transport container ships and transported around the world. That indicator at the moment is on is going down and of course as you fully appreciate that if you are a, if you are the globalist elites and there you are meeting in davos and you've seen your huge plan come together since uh, nixon opened up relationships with china and that you take a vast majority of the manufacturing industry in the world and base it in one place and that's why we have this huge globalist nationalist fight going on because they then can't control uh, countries that wish to stand up for themselves and be nationalists. Um, this is rather interesting because if the Chinese economy is so affected, then the whole of the world's economy is then affected. That's why I go back to the earlier comment where I say about wanting to get the factories going, uh, you know, opened up and get going as fast as possible, because this this will cause even more dissent. But the dissent that people cannot deny that they are seeing their own people being killed on the streets, the fact that they hid for seven weeks what was happening 
with this virus, Tony, um, can only, you know, the, what is going through some of these China, Chinese people's minds. Um, and then let's not forget the other thing where we've seen and heard about brave, brave Christians out there going out on the streets and uh, preaching the gospel. Um, it's uh, it's a situation that we are having to really place, you know, really look at closely as it is so moving so fast, Tony. Yes. Um, just one comment on the Epoch Times. Uh, I I don't really, I can't verify this stuff. I just, I saw John Little of the Omega Shocks, Omega mm. Shock, um, he has a website and he posts uh, updates, a letter, yesterday's one, and he's here, talking about the virus, and he says um, the Epoch Times is being somewhat deceptive, according to John. He, he claims that they are the media arm of the Falun Gong, um, whom the Communist Party of China absolutely hates, and with a mutual hatred sort of thing. And he's right. saying that... Um, the Falun Gong, if they do control the Epoch Times, they are going to be obviously anything that they can do to blacken the Communist Party in China, they're going to do. So it, it, the gist of what John was saying is don't necessarily trust anything coming from them to be objective because they mm. can't, yeah. So that, I, I don't know. That's the first I've known about that. So. Um, that's just well, that's a, a point. That's the first. That's the first I've known about it. But what it does show, as as you've quite rightly said, is how much we are having to step back and weigh up so much information before we can then feel that we can make a comment. Because the name of by co the name of the virus it is it's like an overview of flu. That's what the carnivorous virus means. It's like can you know flu the flu virus. Um, but this has an, an appalling, an appalling strain like SARS, SARS and even worse in, in how it's uh, sadly killing people. Yeah. An interesting thing to note is how many people are dying in China and yet they're not dying outside of China at this point. Um, I think there's still only one person outside of China and one in Hong Kong which I still consider yes. to be China, that have died yeah. out of the hundreds of cases. So it's not um, it's, it's not a kill-all virus that's going to kill everyone. I, I can see uh, potentially if, the, if people don't get treatment in the West, if the mm. cases explode, that, yeah, it could mm. kill a lot more people. I also see there's a lot of potential to use this to lock down people and bring martial yes. law-type scenarios all over the place and... And then, of course, the economic ramifications of all that, which in some ways almost seems like a worse threat than the virus itself. Um, and then, but back to the Communist Party in China, we don't really know what they're telling us. How how much of it can we trust? I, I doubt much of it at all. They could could they? Oh well, this is a question. Could they even be using this to cover up killing a lot more dissidents? And claiming it's the virus, or you know, maybe not even saying anything, but it's just a chance to bop, bop off more people that are enemies of the state, kind of thing. And it's really interesting. You mentioned the doctor and also the journalist. I think there are at least two journalists that have gone missing that have reported yeah. videos and photos, and and even that death of that doctor to me is somewhat suspicious. Um, you know that he apparently was a Christian. Uh, from right. my understanding, which of course would not have gone down well with the, no. the Communist Party as well, so it's so hard to know exactly what the truth is. It is, and but you raise, as you always do, you raise some really, really important points. And the other thing that we're doing is having a debate. We're trying to have a debate. We're trying to get our head around what's going on, and and it's important that everyone brings all these pieces to pieces of the puzzle to together there is no doubt about it of course say it sounds a bit of a stupid thing to say but we know that something is going on what you just said as an excuse to maybe bump up a few dissidents absolutely why why not because we look at the way that they behave well, you know even if you go back to to Tiananmen square in 1989 you look at recently what's been happening in hong kong none of that can be taken can be taken for granted at all and we look at the Chinese spread 
around around the world yeah. and and going for mineral resources in in Africa and all the rest the amount of real estate that they own in uh, in Manhattan etc cetera, etc cetera. this is their spread is is real and then wanting to uh, you know over here um uh, Huawei to be, to build you know a 5G network here which I don't particularly want no. um and I saw just on that note, I saw a note today that it seemed that something about uh, Switzerland refusing 5G that was on uh, Facebook today that needs a bit of investigating. Um, there's some uh, very good work going over here in in uh, in uh, in the UK. You know, that's the actually sorry. That's a good point, too, because I have not had a chance to research this, but I have seen people's comments saying that in Wuhan that the 5G had only recently been turned on there and is it possible that that is affecting people's immune systems or that it's even killing people, I don't know. I've not done any research. I'm sure listeners will leave comments on that Mm. and perhaps post us some links as to the Mm. um, genuineness Mm. of that. Mm. Mm. No, I'd I'd heard that. and also over here in the UK, um, trying to think of his name, um, that an individual has gone on up and down the, the land in the UK, holding some seminar, holding uh, uh, conferences, speaking engagements, talking to the public um, about uh, warning about 5G. I think in the uh, Stoke area, Council of Stoke, uh, up in up north in the country is actually uh, the council don't want maybe 5G going into the country. Um, yeah, there are some very, very deep concerns over here and also uh, deep concerns in uh, America, like uh, Debbie Tavares warning uh, warning about that in regard to uh, California. And also there is a big uh, movement in Montana that's been uh, pushing back against this because you're right. I mean, it's the way that it affects us uh, when we uh, even more through the airways, radiation attacking us. It has to have an effect on our bodies, Tony. It has to. And what about Elon Musk wanting to, or already launching, I think, was it from memory, 20,000 satellites for 5G into the atmosphere? I mean, this is like not only is it going to mean potentially the planet is bathed in 5G from up there, but imagine the visual pollution. You look up at the night sky and instead of seeing stars, you're going to see these blinking satellites whizzing around. It's just insane. (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, Because the other thing is over here, um, I was sent it today, was the, uh, it's like a a transhumanist uh, party of the UK, a political party uh, starting, yeah. I mean, uh, all all of this is all all of this is all tied in, and um, I'm not much of an expert on that, but I'm just trying to catch up with that. But but the the big thing is is that you know where is where is the church in in all of this? Where is the church addressing all of, all of these uh, all of these issues, Tony? This is uh, this really is uh, the concern to me. You know, it's down to it's down to us. Um, but yeah, the trans the transhumanist. What will you choose? Uh, welcome to the official site of the UK transhumanist party. It exists. A friend of mine sent this to me. Dear friend sent this to me this morning. The transhumanist party is a new political organization in the UK, part of a network of similar groups. Here we go around the world committed to positive social change through technology. Transhumanism is the idea that we must improve ourselves and society using the most effective tools available to go beyond what we have been in order to overcome the world's problems and create a better future. Oh dear. Yeah, well, so, you look at people I've mentioned in a number of videos in the past, people can search them out if they want. Uh, Ray Kurzweil, head, head engineer at Google, an avowed transhumanist. And um, boy, when you listen to that guy talk, it's scary stuff, I tell you, what these people believe. And yet, look at the position that he's in in the technological world. So, mm, yeah, it's another piece of this get- puzzle. <laughs> It goes back to something very interesting in a conference uh, I was at uh, last summer here, the watch or last October here, the Watchman Conference in California, 
and uh, someone there doing a wonderful uh, presentation on this, talking about what is in California in regard to, of course, Google, Amazon, etc., but all these tech companies, and was laying out the history of Bohemian Grove and this, the fact that what happens in California then goes to the rest of America and then it goes to the rest of the world. And within all of this discussion, we have to constantly remind ourselves, I'm talking to myself here. I don't sit here as some amazing theologian or anything like that. I'm not. But the fact that as Ephesians 6 talks about that we're in this spiritual battle, we're not fighting flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. And that's what we're dealing with here. And the way that they the way they morph into different things per century in what the enemy is then doing. Um, but it was a fascinating conversation looking at the history of California, what it births, because, of course, you know, even now, even though it's turning into a complete state in various parts, sadly, with all the homelessness and everything, its GDP, its gross national product means that its domestic product means that it could have its own seat at the G8 and all this. It's an extremely on the G7. It's an extremely, you know, its economy is is the equivalent of a number of countries, even though it's a, a state within America. But it's spiritually all of that, where this where this uh, comes from, Tony, you know, we've just got to constantly remember, remember that, you know, it's it's absolutely fascinating to me. But you're absolutely right. It's it's horrifying. But to see that, you know, the transhumanist party of the UK, uh, this this is real, sir. This is now uh, playing out before our eyes. Yeah, it sure is. So talking about the UK, so what's the latest now that it seems to have disappeared from the main public view, <laughs> the Brexit? <laughs> well, on the 31st, on the 31st of January, we uh, officially, we officially left the uh, European Union. Um, it When we joined, it was the common market, then it became the uh, the European Economic Community, and then it became the European Union. And as it was always planned to be a political and monetary union uh, organization from 1923. So it's always planned like that. So what's happened? Well, we've officially left, hallelujah, but we now have until December to negotiate a trade deal with the, the EU, EU or the EU to negotiate a trade deal with us. We um, we now can sit at uh, any trade dealing, uh, any trade deal in our own terms, e.g. if we're meeting at the WTO, we are now a separate country. And the key thing just to remind everyone is that within the EU is that one person would neg would negotiate trade deals on behalf of all the 27 or now 26 or 27 members of the EU. Uh, that are left because we have actually left. It would be negotiating that. And the EU is responsible for approximately, I think now, 15% of the world's uh, trade. So we have left this cartel. So what's happening? Well, what's happening now is that, you know, the European Union, Barnier, um, the uh, the uh, failed uh, German defense minister who now runs, uh, who's taken over from Juncker, her name has just gone from my mind, um, must be of great significance. They're all throwing their weight around going, you know, uh, we still, the French still want to fish in your waters, the Dutch still want to fish in your waters, the Spanish still want to fish in the waters, what are you going to do? So now all the trade starts. Now the European Union they um, they do more trade with us than we do with them. There are more people uh, depending on trade with us in Europe than we with them. So now the hardball starts. They've been threatening to uh, not allow the city of London in you know access to their markets and all this kind of thing financially. Well, that's not going to happen. Um, so what is it? It's basically suddenly, unlike Mrs. May. Um, I, there's a bit of hardball that's going to go on. Um, I personally would like to leave without a deal. That freaks a bunch of people out and that we can then trade under WTO Article 24 um, and then take our time to negotiate things. 
if are you going to tell me that um, Audi are not going to ship cars here and that French wine is not going to come here and French cheese and all the other goods are still not going to come here? Of course they are. And just just to reassure everyone, at the moment, planes are still flying. We have goods in the shops. Uh, there hasn't been a run on any medicines yet or anything else. I don't mean that sarcastically. And all our phones are working because we had Project Fear for months and months and months. So where are we at? We're at that. And also today has been quite significant because it does tie in with this. Um, Boris Johnson has done a reshuffle of his cabinet. So uh, Javid, who was the chancellor this morning, has now been uh, has now been uh, is now resigned because this is what's interesting. What's going on is that Dominic Cummings, who's the chief advisor to Boris Johnson, who was involved with uh, Leave EU, Dominic Cummings is attacking, I believe quite rightly, our civil service like no other. Because we have to remember that we, and these are the tie-ins to what's been happening in the in the United States as well, where we talk about the Obama carryovers, people that were in the Obama administration or appointed under the Obama era, they're still there with their ideology within the uh, Trump White House. Uh, Vindeman being a classic example of that. So, we now see since 1973, when we gave up the sovereignty of our nation to the then the common market EU, um, people joined. They voted to join the common market because they wanted to trade, wanted to trade with other countries and have low tariff barriers. It all made it all made sense. But what we were never explained that it was about monetary and economic union. It was about creating a federal state of Europe, which meant that we would not be responsible for our own laws, etc. And the key thing is, is that a country that's not in charge of its own borders, not is in charge of its own laws, not is not in charge of its own money, and not in charge of its own language is not a country anymore. And you can take those four prerequisites and apply that to any nation around the world. So hence why we've got this globalist nationalist fight going on. Um, so where are we at? We've got a massive purge that I believe that's going to be happening within the civil service because over the last three and a half years, they have been used along with 75% of our um, members of parliament have been fighting us for against the Brexiteers to actually leave, to actually leave the European Union. So where are we at? Quickly summing up. We're at that point, Tony. We're at the fact that we're going to be negotiating a trade deal up until December, which is a long, it's going to be quite painful. As soon as we get there without a deal, uh, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Or if we're going to have a deal, make sure that it's a good deal in our favour. sooner we get there, the better. Because um, all this sabre rattling, um, is going to be continuing and is going to be uh, going on. And of course, in the meantime, the EU want to establish their own army and all, all of this uh, kind of thing. And another important factor, more and more, our own swamp is being exposed, frankly, in regard to we still have got this embedded view, this embedded ideology within the uh, British Broadcasting Corporation, the BBC. Um, about, you know, being so Remainer focused still. We had that in various other parts of our of the media, which means that for those of us that have wanted to leave the EU and as Brexiteers, we do not, we cannot take our foot off the gas at all. We took our, our foot off the gas in 2016 when we won the vote on June the 23rd, when 17,410,753 750, people or the majority of over a million voted out. And then we took our foot off the gas. And then, of course, remember that Nigel Farage walked off the pitch, so to speak, and all the rest, and then had to come back and create the Brexit party. We need to be on our guard that Brexit does mean Brexit. Um, so that is that is where we're at, Tony. Does that give you a, a bit of a flavour of what's been going on? It, it does. It's very interesting to, um, catching up on that point of view. But as you're speaking, I'm thinking, um, London, haven't you now got some coronavirus cases there? 
um, and could this be used um, as a stalling tactic in a way uh, because, well, when I say a stalling tactic, a, a, a means to end up bringing uh, kind of a control of the population and the same thing kind of could happen all over the place um, globally if this thing starts to take off, this then could cripple everything. Well, I mean, you raise a good point. Let's come at it from a another point of view. Yes, you're right. Let's come at it from another point of view as well, because um, there is this debate. Suddenly there's been a viewpoint thrown up, and this supposedly is supposed to be, you know, a conservative government that we've voted for, and there is a purge of liberal progressives that have gone on uh, in regard to uh, in regard to this uh, 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 the Conservative Party, um, it's this whole thing of controlling the internet, of controlling information. That debate is going on over yeah. here. Um, that debate is definitely going on in uh, in Canada with Trudeau because he said, "I've got six hundred uh, Canadian dollars that I'd like to give to various people that basically will just go along with my narrative." You've got Elizabeth Warren in the Democratic Party who uh, has said, you know, we need to control uh, the Internet and fake news and all this uh, kind of thing. Why is that linked with the virus? Well, again, you know, with what's been happening in China, where it's the control of information, the fact that we in the West, which have always we've said, uh, you know, we can have an interesting debate about the definition of free speech even in within the West. And then it let's tie that in to where we talked about the principalities and powers. So in 1989, the wall comes down. And to me, I just feel, looking in hindsight, that that spiritually, that whole, the spirit of communism and socialism always leads to communism. And uh, as Stalin said, it's not um, who votes, it's who, who counts the votes that's most important. But that whole spirit moving to to the left. And we've seen over the last couple of years, this whole cultural Marxism come at us like no other time. We're suddenly so awakened to this all over the world. So I think there's even debates, there's huge debates in Australia about free speech. I have to say this to you, which is I find really, I'm very grateful for. I'm very grateful for Sky News Australia because some of the programs like The Outsiders, etc., there is some amazing, genuine, I believe, genuine conservative voices on there. Hopefully not... Uh, we're not being sucked into another psyops there, but there is a real pushback out there in in regard to the conservative voice. And sometimes you've got to go over there to get news that reflects on what's happening over here and, and vice versa. But in regard to the virus, yes, you are right that there is a few cases in London. There's a few cases on the south coast. A GP surgery had to be uh, cleaned, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then there's a few other cases further up. Brighton, Worthing area. Um, I don't know. I just pray that it isn't. It isn't going to. It isn't going to uh, explode, Tony. Um, I think more and more people, more and more people, and when we look at Twitter, when we look at other social media, more and people, more and more people are awake. I believe than at no other time, really, with some of the comments that are being said, and there's some very, very educated comments that are said when they start talking about, say, in regard to China, Agenda 21, Agenda 30, moving people off the land, moving in into high rise uh, flats and all this kind of thing. Um, people are awake. Um, sadly, I don't think they're awake within the church. I think the church, say, over here is totally and utterly asleep. Um, there are a number of people who are awake uh, because and a lot of those are number of those are personal friends of mine um so we're connecting with each other we suddenly realize why we need each other and just on that note that's why it's incredible to have this conversation with you me from london to uh new zealand and other friends in australia other friends in america and other friends in canada we all and you've got friends in some of those places we all need each other and we all need to be supporting each other and praying for each other and um, that's, that's something i'd just like to throw in there um, yeah and um just so that I was just going to say, okay. yeah, I mean, and on that note, it was great to hear that you um, met James Musker recently. So, I, I you did. know, my two <laughs> London correspondents <laughs> in a sense, um, which is fantastic. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just want to say another thing, um, following from what you said about the internet and controlling the internet, let's not forget that um, 
mock event that the um, they had in, I think it was October or November last year from memory, and I think it was called Event 201, uh, where they did a mock-up thing about a virus, a, a, a coronavirus of all things. Yes. And, um, in New, in, is this in New York? Yes. Was this in New York? Yeah, it yeah. was. And um, and what were one of the things that they were talking about on there was the need to control fake news and the social media and all of those kind of things as part of the strategies to stop people from spreading disinformation. In other words, we've got to make sure that people only spread what we want them to spread um, and I think that was very interesting coming so close before a real event um, and what's happening now. So we will have to wait and see. But in, in China, they've increased the rounding up of people. They've also banned people in many places from leaving their homes. So you imagine mm. if those people don't have food stocked in their homes, how they're going to mm. be doing. Um, mm. you know, you, you've got uh, executive orders in the US, which means they can quarantine people and Absolutely. whatnot. So, so we're going to have to wait and see how this plays out. I'm really hoping that it just fades and fizzles, but at this point, it's anyone's guess as to where this is going. Mm. Absolutely, and and sites like John uh, Rappenpour, uh sites. Um, the 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 matrix revealed, etc. You know, John is a, a wonderful source of information and in giving a different viewpoint on on the whole virus and and what's been happening as well. Um, yeah, I, my prayer is that it will fizzle out. But it, what it also shows us, if we put it in the context quite rightly of of the Bible, when we say that you know birth pangs, whether Revelation yeah. which is, talks about the birth pangs. Um, is this a sign of birth pangs warning to us where we see earthquakes happening more and all this kind of thing? And, um, you know, Jesus, we're not date setters, you and I, Tony, and yeah. many others and dear friends, we're not date setters. But the Bible does say about, you know, look at the signs of the times, observe about what is going on. And the fact is, is that within China, this whole surveillance state and that's what they then want to bring over here even more. And let's put it in this context. We just had, I talked about it this morning on the show, we just had a an appalling stabbing in South London. We had then an, another appalling incident on London Bridge, care of people that believe in, the, in, uh, in uh, Islamic jihadism and that ideology. Has to be said, it's true. So on the London Bridge, the guy, a guy who uh, went on a went into a uh, he thought go into a de-radicalization program in many ways, tricked himself into that, came out of that and then went and stabbed uh, two young people um, on the uh, on London Bridge last November. Then this incident happened at the beginning of February um, in South London in uh, an area called Streatham. That particular individual uh, was being watched by the police, and in a uh, in a report in a newspaper, it said that if we are following someone that's following this ideology that's been released from prison early, and that's another big debate that's going on, it shouldn't happen. Um, it would take up to thirty members of the police force to actually follow this individual, you know, twenty four seven. Now that's thirty for one individual. We supposedly have 3,000 of these people that would wish to do jihadist acts along the lines that happened on London Bridge and along the lines that have happened in Streatham. Now, do the maths. We don't have those resources to do to cover that. We also have people that have returned ISIS fighters that went out. They've come back. We've had the jihadi bride. Um, who has lost her first round of her case. Good. As far as I'm concerned, sorry. Passport gone. You ha are committing treason against the country that um, you have been born and bred in and, and God willing has done, you know, has treated you well. Um, I was part of a discussion on the fact that our country is looking at, uh, with the Home Secretary, with the Prime Minister, is trying to rush through legislation to stop these people being released early. So if they've been given 14, 20 years uh, in prison, they need to serve 14, 20 years instead of only serving half of that sentence and then they're released. Um, this is madness that's going on. Uh, we need to address this. They're on about having a debate about treason laws. Now, 
e.g. people doing something against the country that they have actually come from. And maybe we'll even have a debate about capital punishment. But this again is tied in. This is about wearing us out in many ways. The amazing Polly from Canada did a fantastic thing on this. No one follows her. Go and, and find out her stuff. Because it's about the fact that we we believe in justice. Humanity naturally believes in justice. If you if you've done a crime, then you need to pay for that. And what they're trying to do is to undermine all that. Well, we're only give you a little crime. If you if you rape someone, we'll just give you four years and all this kind of thing. So in um, in Canada, um, there was a uh, Canadian um, who found himself in Guantanamo Bay because of uh, actions against American soldiers that he had done. Then he was released from Guantanamo Bay and he was taken back into Canada and uh, forgotten the legality of this. But suddenly Trudeau welcomed him back and gave him 10 million Canadian dollars in uh, compensation and all this kind of thing. And then about a couple of days ago, he was speaking, he was invited to speak at a university event. There were people giving him a standing ovation and the wonderful Ezra Levant tried to get into the occasion um, and was stopped from uh, doing so. Um, this kind of stuff is about wearing us down into the fact that we, you know, the law is the law. We're asking people to uphold the law. If you committed a crime, then you need to pay for that. So the liberalization of those laws throughout the world and undermining common sense is trying to literally wear us down when we get fed up with this. I mean, the other thing in Canada at the moment, I know it does totally tie in, but it's about this whole thing of wearing down common sense is that there are people there, as we had with Extinction Rebellion in London, shutting down streets and all this kind of thing. People couldn't get to work. They're trying to stop trains working and all this. And in the end, people put, took the law into their own hands in certain cases, and I don't blame them at all. And in Canada, you've got people shutting down um, freeways, etc. And Trudeau's not, not exactly interfering, asking people to negotiate on both sides. No, take these people off the streets so that the economy can run because in in certain parts of the country if we say in alberta canada uh, on on the west side people are suffering people want jobs they want an economy that uh, is actually functioning instead of uh, political correctness uh, environmental green nonsense um, and all of this is going on so it's undermining our psyche and that's why it's really important. And I'm blessed by to have this conversation with you. That's why we need to be praying with each other and to connect with each other, because on a bad day, we can all think we're on our own and that we're going completely and utterly crazy. And that's the kind of situation that they actually want to create, Tony. Very good points. And which leads me to, um, as our time is sort of dr drawing towards a close, to think, OK, we could see potentially a big economic downturn from, say, this coronavirus if it does escalate. Mm. Um, this mm. could be an excuse to collapse the economies or whatever. But even if it doesn't, if people end up confined to whatever to their own space for a time or any other realm, number of natural disasters or man-made disasters, I just want to reiterate to people a couple of things at a minute to midnight we've said since day one on this show, and it seems very fitting at the moment, again, is to make sure, A, you are spiritually prepared like, you know, right with God, and then for people to actually do things to prepare themselves for eventualities by stocking up on food and water and supplies and things. So if something like this does go down, you can actually be self-sufficient for a period of time. Uh, mm. I know a lot of people struggle to have money to, to do things and buy extra stuff, but, gee, a lot of stuff is not that expensive. A couple of extra bags of rice, a few tins of this and that. Plastic containers, if you have to, were filled with water that you've just saved, you know, um, beans, canned goods. There's a lot of mm. cheap things you can actually do um, to be prepared to, you know, bug in if you have to for a period of time if things yeah. start to go really um, wrong and potentially, you know, a lot of transport could stop if... If the virus takes off or some other thing, could be an earthquake or whatever it is, you know. Mm. So I just think it's it's prudent to warn people again, 
do things to help yourself be prepared to be self-sufficient. Don't, I mean, God will look after people, but I think in a sense, he looks after people that use the announce more than mm. than just going, oh, well, we're not going to do anything and God will look after us when you have the means to do something. So I, I feel kind of strongly right now that telling people be prepared because um, if this is the birth pangs and possibly even beyond just the birth pangs, we could be seeing mm. the unfolding of the four horsemen or whatever. Mm. I don't know. I'm mm. not saying we are. But mm. it's potentially possible. So we're going to have to realise you can't rely on governments and you can't rely on systems to function no. properly. So you want to be as as well prepared for those things as you can be within your means. Yeah, mm. I fully, I fully agree with you, and I'm talking to myself as well, and you're talking to me on that. So thank you very much for that, Tony. I honestly uh, think it's a hugely important point that so many Christians overlook, and let's not be asleep to the reality that, you know, we all have to eat, <laughs> we, and we yes. all have to have shelter and whatnot, and, and water, obviously, first and foremost. And if systems start breaking down, it's too late to start preparing at that point. Absolutely, because we're all tuned into this just-in-time uh, economy and ordering and ordering system. I mean, for argument's sake, at the moment, you know, whatever. If Hyundai, I think, make a lot, get a lot of parts. I think made in China. Then what's gonna, what's gonna happen there, and what's gonna happen to their supply chain, etc. And and in other and in other cases, um, this is why this is is uh, it's going to be interesting. But if nothing else, that's a real wake up call to us. Uh, my own personal frustration on that note, and I think I'm turning that corner while I try not to bash my head against a brick wall anymore is that over here talking on behalf of the uh, sort of UK church I know a number of churches that talk about these issues because they're led by friends of mine um, who are doing an incredible job but these issues are not talked about the book of revelations is not uh, is not studied um, really but not giving a warning about where where we are actually at and what is actually going on but other people i thank god that they are but we are not we are not prepared but then again scripture says you know there is going to be a great falling away and as jesus said you know jesus said will i find faith upon the earth you know all of those things are coming it's as though we're building up to that people are turning around and going well because there's atms has still got money in and there's food in the shop then everything must be fine and as as jesus as the disciples said to jesus when will we know the day of your return as in the days of noah so people are still partying going on about their business um but as christians you know we're we're not of this world we're passing through but our priority is is and i'm talking to myself is is preaching the gospel and is saying to people that jesus said i am the way the truth and the life no one gets to the father but through me and that is the most important thing and that's what we also need to be reminding ourselves about and hear me i don't sit here as some sanctimonious perfect person the very close friends of mine will soon tell you that um but it is really I don't think there's been a, a time in my life over the last uh, year or two where all these things are really becoming more and more pertinent. And particularly as we look at events that are unfolding, as you quite rightly just said, Tony. Yes. Well, I, perhaps a, a good way to finish up this show would be maybe you could pray, pray for our listeners. I mean, you said a great prayer um, before we started on, on um, air. So uh, I'm reckoning it may be a great way to close. What a, it'd be a real privilege to do. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the privilege of, of being able to talk, being able to talk to Tony and being able to talk to uh, anyone who's going to listen. And I just thank you for that. And Father, what is on my heart, what is on Tony's heart is that people will, will just wake up. This is not, this is not a private club for us to say that we have certain certain information it's a we have to share this information we have to shout from the mountain top we have we are the watchmen on the walls blowing the shofars as loud as we can to give a warning to people 
And my prayer is that whoever's listening, that we that they would do that. We would do that in in the in the only way that um, we can in all our different circumstances. And Father, I just pray that you just work, wake up your body, the body that is asleep. You just uh, be gracious enough to wake people up, call circumstances in their lives for them to turn to you like no other time in their life. And I pray for that. And I thank you for all the different friends that I know and other brothers and sisters in Christ that are awake and are really, really trying to really seek you and do the best walk that they can at this moment. And there are many people going through a really, really tough time because they are serving you and they are listening to what you are saying. And there is a huge price to pay for that within a world that does not want to listen, that has swallowed the Kool-Aid in regard to the uh, liberal progressive agenda. And I pray that you just give us the courage to push back, to speak out where we can. And I ask that more and more that you will connect us together. And I thank you for the uh, privilege of this and to being able to pray. And I thank you for Minute to Midnight and for Tony's ministry. And I just ask that you will bless him profoundly, bless him financially and health wise and his family. I pray in Jesus name and just give you thanks for all that he does and what you've led him to do in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So just one last thing, Mark. Where can people find you online if they want to search out your stuff? Uh, that's a very good thing. Um, my my website is completely offline at the moment. But you can find me uh, you can find me on Facebook, um, Mark Sutherland. Go on YouTube, uh, watch my little film Between Lambs and Lions. Share that. I have a new film coming out, uh, The Iris Echo, about communism. Um, and you will hear about that and hopefully my website with various films will be up and running again soon. So um, thank you. Also, people can reach out to me if you want to reach out to me by email. It's MarkSutherland26 at gmail.com. Got no problem with that. But thank you, Tony, very much indeed. And thank you too. Um, it's been a great discussion. We'll have to do it again soon, Mark. We will do. I'll be honoured to come back. Thank you, Tony. And folks, our website, a minute to midnight.com. Don't forget to bookmark that and follow us. And also join our forum on the website if you want to as well. That'd be great. We have a Facebook group too, by the way. All our shows are put on iTunes first and YouTube, as well as on our website. We have archives of everything on the website. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. YouTube does unsubscribe people quite often, so check your subscription and um, make sure if you're not subscribed that you resubscribe. And also I say subscribe to us on iTunes as well because it gives you a couple of different options and our website. The music used in the shows I've written, played and recorded and you can download free music if you want on the website as well. We do run a minute to midnight 100% by donations. Really grateful to the people that help us by donating. And if you want to do that, you can donate on the website and that would be very much appreciated. That's about it for this episode. We'll be back hopefully and God willing in a few days time. Until then, this is Tony saying goodbye and God bless.